Welcome to the complete collection of Tim Duncan's greatest stories. If you have missed any of the other episodes in the series, there is a complete collection playlist in the description box down below and on the top right corner of your screen. If you click on that link, you'll find all the episodes in the series. Thank you to everybody who commented that they would like to see a Tim Duncan episode. If there's a player that you would like to see, be sure to comment it down below to be featured in the next episode. Without further ado, I don't want to keep you waiting, but I would really appreciate if you guys could hit that like button. It takes two seconds of your time and it really helps the channel out. If you are new and you think you may enjoy this series, be sure to hit that subscribe button and tap that notification button so you stay up to date with all the new episodes in the series. Without further ado, welcome to the complete collection of Tim Duncan's greatest stories. Send it in. Yeah, that's important. What? Rookie, rookie. Believe it or not, y'all, uh, Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan, shout mm. to Timmy. Mm. Tim Duncan, Timmy. people would not see him verbally saying stuff because he wouldn't talk in sentences. He's the most stable, great player in the history of the NBA. I'll go with Tim Duncan. Yeah, I did too. You go with Duncan. Duncan is probably Tim Duncan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What did you think I was going to say? Timmy is superstar plus plus. He's by himself in his own knee. By himself. Now, you hear a lot of other people say Tim Duncan is the greatest power forward to ever play the game. I agree with that. Tim was an amazing teammate. You know, what he was able to accomplish, you know, not only um, in the regular season, but more importantly in the postseason. How many times have you seen somebody get a triple-double in game six in the deciding game to win the championship? I knew he was great, but I really seen greatness that day. Like Tim Duncan is great. Nobody knew he was going to play basketball. Duncan? Give us a great Duncan story. What's the kind of Duncan story that, that you share with your buddies where you go, this is me telling you he's a little different than maybe yeah, this Yeah, he's boring, not a quiet guy. Right, he's this, no, this happened. Right. He's always this boring, quiet guy publicly, but he has to be more interesting than that. Yeah, I got a good story. We was playing paintball. It's preseason, you know, Tim. Which is, year are we? This is um, going into the championship year, going into the uh, well, 03. Oh, 03. 03. <laughs> David Robinson's last year. And, uh, you know, Tim likes paintball guns. He likes to paint paintball. And it's hard to believe that a guy is set that tall. That big of a target. Is the best hider <laughs> in paintball. Going into the season. Um, the You're 24. Yeah. The previous year, I was on the Angeles, so I didn't play all that year. So um, we going. I, been, I was there all summer. I stayed in, in, this, in uh, San Antonio all summer and stayed and worked out with Tim. And you liked Tim. You and Tim got That's along. That's my guy. He right. loved, you know what I'm saying? Tim loved me. And the way he embraced me, it felt like, I had my big brother again because I lost my big brother when I was 15, 16. So Tim Duncan filled that role the time I was in San Antonio. I have to give him that. That's why I love him to death. But he used to always take me with him playing paintball. He knew I wasn't scared of nothing. I've been shot at by real bullets. You know, I, you know, I'm one of those guys. You know, I'm not afraid to get shot. I've been shot at many times in real life. So non-paintball. Paintball <laughs> bullets didn't bother me at all, right? So. Uh, the paintball, so we shoot, and I was always, I was running, I didn't mind get hit, so it was a game, grabbed the flag, so. So, I was not worried about paintballs at all, you know what I mean? So, we <laughs> wanted to have a team bonding e uh, event before training camp. <laughs> okay, uh, we was not supposed to be playing paintball, and we was in training camp, and uh, we snuck out. Pop actually, t actually, he told us not to go, we, you know, it was two days for camp, and we went anyway. Pop said, y'all can do anything y'all want, just don't go play paintball. He knew how serious me and Tim took paintball. So it was all Tim's idea. If you can believe it. It's Tim's idea to go against Pop. I have some friends. Tim have some friends. So we, we separate the two teams. So I'm always on Tim's team. So I, don't, I didn't know really the paintball talk. So 10, they, I want you at 10. I want you at 20. And it's different bells. So I know 20 is in the middle. 10 is all the way up. 50 is mm -hmm. back. You know, it's like yards. Sure. But, it, but it's beams that you hide behind. So... Normally at the beginning of the game, Tim, Tim telling me, Jack, go. That means go as far as I can without getting shot. If, if I can get close to him, like right on the other side of him, where I can shoot him like this, mm -hmm. go, Jack. But he knows <laughs> I'm not scared to get hit. <laughs> so I'm like, you know, Tim Duncan telling me to go. Go, Jack, go. So I take off running. We're playing a game called uh, Get the Flag. So like I said, Tim had all the 2020 things. I had the normal mask that you get from the place when you go there. Yeah. Know, they give you the stock stuff. You got rentals. Rentals, exactly. That's exactly what I had. So I had a rental mask. So I'm not knowing that these masks fog up, right? I'm yeah. not knowing that. So I didn't know that. I was, I was just an action junkie. So I'm running out there to go get the flag, and my mask free, uh, fogs up. 
I'm 007. I'm dodging bullets, sliding. You know, I'm just doing all the stuff that I see on video games. I'm actually doing it in real life. So I get to the stairs to grab the flag, right? So it's, it's, the flag is in between some steps, so you can go up without getting hit. But the bullets, I mean, uh, the, the, it's not bullets, the paintballs are still coming. So I'm ducking down, and I'm reaching up for the flag, and as I reach up for the flag, I breathe, and my mask fogs up. So I have to go up the steps. So I slip on the first step. As I do that, my mask slides up. I hit the step, mouth first. Boom! Blood just starts shooting everywhere. So nobody knows, because they can't see me. Nobody knows that I'm about to bleed out. <laughs> I'm about to bleed out. It was a self-inflicted wound. I'm about to bleed out. So I'm, I'm on the steps, holding, trying to feel like all this blood coming from my lips just swelling up at the same time. It's just swelling up. Blood just starts shooting everywhere, <laughs> shooting everywhere. So I'm, my mask, so I put my mask down. I'm trying to run off the court, I mean, off the field, and I'm just holding my mouth, and I'm just getting shot. And I'm trying to tell people, stop, stop, and I'm getting shot the whole way. So as I get there, I take up my mask, and Tim's like, oh, how I'm going to tell Pop? My lip is just huge. It's just, I'm talking about huge, and Tim was just like, how I'm going to tell Pop, how I'm going to tell Pop? So we made up something. We sit there and try to make up all kind of stuff. I fell somewhere, da, da, da. And once we got to practice, we had a nice story. I don't remember exactly what the story was the next what day. What were some of the lies that you suggested? Uh, that I fell down the steps at home. Shower, A cat. ball hit me in the mouth. Yeah, you know, yeah. I was playing. Uh, me and my friend was boxing and stuff like that. So I get to practice, and I see Pop. So his face is like, I don't want to hear it. Don't, be, don't BS me. Tell me what happened. So as I'm getting ready to tell the story, Malik Rose walks in. This is I'm glad he did because he helped us. Pop has the shack gonna, of the knack. Yeah. Pop has the you jeopardized my best player Tim Duncan. You was involved. You're hurt. I don't know what you know. Yeah, you didn't even play he's last hot. year. Oh, he's terrible. <laughs> he's he's hot. Malik walks in, and as I'm finna explain, Pop Malik walks in and points at my lip. Yo, what is this? And just busts out laughing. Right. His reaction made Pop laugh. <laughs> and, uh, <we> <laughs> that was my time. We went and played paintball, Pop. I can't lie. I fell playing paintball. He's like, did not. But I was all right. He seen I was all right. Yeah. And Malik kind of broke the ice. And nothing was wrong with Duncan. I didn't get suspended. <laughs> Tim was fine. Tim was laughing. Pop's only reply was, I'm glad it was you and not Tim. I'd rather be you than Tim. Thanks, Pop. Oh, Tim's cool, man. Tim's a class actor. Very good people. It was a pleasure. It's a fun off the court kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, it's so laid back, so relax. Check out the player. <laughs> 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 I've stuck out here for a while. Oh, man. You know, but on the court, he's a warrior. Go, guys. So it, it's nice to have him see those two aspects. Kobe Bryant, who is the best player in the NBA right now, yourself included? Mm. Come on. I'm not going to say it's somebody else. Are you kidding me? Mm. Mm. And I know what I think. And I'm sure there's plenty of other people who feel the same, you know, feel the same way about themselves. You know, at the end of the year, um, you know, when our careers are all said and done, then everybody can go ahead and discuss and see what's what. And we can count chips, can't we? And and let the chips fall where they may, as they say. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, I mean, I mean yeah. careful, Cole, because because Duncan's sitting on four, he's playing well. You know what? We had a we had a really good discussion about that when we played in San Antonio, man. Well, I mean, it's been fun competing against him for all these years. And, you know, he and I had an opportunity to have some great dialogue tonight. He said something to me about a shot I took or something like that. He said, hey, man, you, yeah, yeah, Kobe's out here shooting all the balls or something like that. I said, you know what? Four times you beat him in the playoffs. Can't <laughs> <laughs> count. I remember that beating you guys a few times in the playoffs. And he said, well, yeah, you guys, you guys got us a couple of times. I said, you know what, my ring count, I think, is a little higher than you. Shut him down. <laughs> really enjoyed that, man. It was like it was like two two old dogs just barking back and forth at each other. It was great. You battled him for a long time. Just what's it been like going against him for all these years? For you, John. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's a player that I've enjoyed competing against the most. We've had our battles. Hey, what were you thinking, <laughs> Tim Duncan, when you got ejected? for laughing on the bench in 2007. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in shock for a very long time that went straight to very, very, very mad. Uh, um, I know there was a couple choice words flung his direction at the uh, exit there, um, but uh, in absolute shock uh, until it kind of caught up to me.
I, I don't know if I have ever, I've covered you for a long time. I don't know if I've ever seen you get mad mad. You got mad mad? Yeah, oh yeah, I got mad mad at that one. <laughs> did, you guys, did you guys talk about that over the years afterward? No. We've never, we've never addressed it, I've never talked to him about it, no. no. Wow. He didn't move. <laughs> he didn't say anything. He's leaving the arena. I'm sure Michelle Tafoya here asked him, did you say anything? Nope. No, nope. I didn't say anything. Nope. Just left. I laughed. He gets beat up in there, nothing happens. Hey, it's it was the same ride. Nah, kids. Kobe's trying to get to the basket. Devin was trying to Wait get a minute. To the basket. A to B, and he winds up at C. That's the same Devin thing. Devin who? Him. Oh, come on now. Don't no, say I'm that. serious. I don't even know what you're talking about. Which play you're talking about? I don't even know the one kid's name. I'm Devin Brown. I'm Devin nice Joe Crawford. Nice, nice to meet you. Was there someone that you loved, you knew that the motherfucker could back it up, Andy was going to talk it to you? Uh, believe it or not, y'all, uh, Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan, mm. shout out to Timmy. Mm. Mm. To Tim Duncan, Timmy. people would not see him verbally saying stuff because he wouldn't talk in sentences. <laughs> <laughs> Freeze. Tim, Tim, Timmy would hit you in phrases. Got you. Ooh, almost. <laughs> <laughs> this the worst right here. Nice try. <laughs> <laughs> like subtle shit, no gangster shit, no real hardcore shit, just to subtle least, to just back your ass up and put you back in like this over here. He said that she, it would frustrate him the most, that he would talk all his shit, but she would smile and say like, good job and stuff. Like that would piss him off the most. But really, what really, really, really pissed me off was when the trash talking wasn't affecting him. So now you spending all this energy trying to rile this up. You know, forgot about your own game. You forgot about <laughs> they coming to you that you're supposed to. And then that's when I actually went, quit talking trash to Timmy because he wouldn't respond or he wasn't giving me the reaction that I was having. <laughs> I can't get really get hype off. This nigga ain't really giving me nothing. Look at now, you know, start, you know, doing a little, you know, the shoulder shit and he wouldn't react to that. Yeah. Next thing you know, Timmy got 20, 20, 15. Like, I'm here like, <laughs> so then I started changing that. Why would you never engage in trash talk, Tim? Uh, with him, because that's what he wanted. Okay, that's what he wanted. He wa he wanted to, to to get you outside of yourself. He wanted to, to 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 piss you off and kind of control the situation. And I, I guess I recognize that. Plus, it wasn't part of my game. Like uh, it, it would it would it frustrates people um, more when you just keep coming and coming and coming and you just keep getting things done. And no matter what they throw at you or no matter what they do, you just it just um, it, it, it doesn't affect you and it kind of, it, it ends up affecting them uh, much more than it does you. So that, that was my way, uh, that was my, uh, uh, what I figured out to be most effective. And uh, it, it fit with my game. Like I didn't, yeah. I didn't have to trash talk. I didn't need to trash talk. I wasn't, I wasn't good at it. So, um, I was just about to ask you if you yeah. were even good at doing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so it was my, my more thing was just like kind of poke there, just kind of, kind of poke him a little bit. and. Bro, piss them off a little bit, and then they react and poke him again. I but, didn't, um, I didn't understand that sometimes with Tim. He, I, I used to come out of the game and pop, just screaming and him, cursing him out, and I'm sitting down there. And how's you letting this motherfucker talk to you like this? You Tim Duncan? He would never ain't be saying nothing. So when Pop come to me, I got to be like, what the fuck can I say? Tim Duncan taking it? Right. I got to take, take it. Right? But it made me a better player. It Straight made up. me coachable. Please explain what is happening here. <laughs> what? You look like the Gatorade wrong Why did I drink you. it again? I don't know. <laughs> I swear to God, I've seen this clip 20 times, and it's, it's, I, I need to know what's in there. Flavor I obviously issue? didn't know then either. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, I, I, I didn't know what was in it then. I, I'm, I'm sure that there was some, some kind of, uh, 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 Supplementing it or something that that either it wasn't mine oh, yeah. or uh, uh, it was like, like uh, they used to put the the cramping yeah, medicine yeah, yeah. in there. Electrolyte stuff uh, in there. So maybe that's probably not 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 what I asked for at the time. I wasn't expecting it. Timmy didn't talk to me the whole first year. Didn't say a word to you for the year for no. your rookie year. Didn't talk to you. No, no, but he was a you know he was a superstar and uh, maybe he had doubts. You know that. Uh, uh, a, a little French point guard can uh, bring him to the championship. I will always remember when I was 19 and you called me in the back end of the plane. We were only four games in and you said, Tony, you're going to start next game. I knew he was, he was, 
it was uh, going to be a good one and all of that. But uh, um, I know he was really young, and it was just kind of it was kind of feeling out process where you just got got to get used to people. And I was like, want to start? <laughs> I was like, did you talk to Timmy? Because <laughs> I was like. Is Timmy okay with it? I knew he was a great player, but he never talked to me, you know, uh, during my first year. <laughs> I don't think I said 10 words to him the entire first year. Not for any other reason than I don't, I don't, I don't know what to talk about with the kids, so. I think he didn't think you know, like a little point guard from France can bring him, him to the championship. Uh, so I had to earn his respect. The, the story is, or the story that he tells, is that I didn't speak for him for his first year of his career here. I won't confirm nor deny that. I was so scared. I was like, oh my God, I'm starting. <laughs> That's why the first year, the first time he talked to me is after I had a good series against Gary Payton in the, in the Seattle Supersonics. And I played well in that series. And uh, Gary was one of the best point guards in the NBA. And so I think Timmy saw that if I can play like that against Gary, then I can maybe play like that against anybody. And that gave me a lot of confidence, obviously. And after that summer, that's when I saw the difference with, with Timmy and even most of my teammates. They were like, okay, uh, we can go to war with him. KG and Tim Duncan. Like, those guys can always be linked from your era, but also in their greatness. And those guys you went to war with on a yeah. regular basis. Yeah. Was, who was harder? Tim Duncan. Tim Duncan, Tim. Right. Most guys, I could speed up and make you play at my pace. I could frustrate you. I could do this and I could do that. But with him, it didn't matter. Because he was going to play at his own pace. He was going to get to his spots. He was going to shoot the shot he wanted to shoot. <laughs> and I just had to make that shot as tough as possible. You know what I'm saying? With a guy like KG, like, I know what he's going to do, so I can make him do something different. Well, like, he might make a tough shot, but I can manipulate the way you, the way he shot took shots and things like that. Because mm -hmm. KG dominant right shoulder guy. I know this. Mm -hmm. But with Tim, Tim, the only thing Tim knew that he couldn't play with the ball down here with me. So when Tim went to make his move, he made it. Like, if he played with the ball, like in one game, I stripped Tim Duncan seven times in one game. No, like, I heard Pop laid into Tim <laughs> after the game. Like, stripped him seven times. After that, I mean, he made it tough for me to get him again, you know what I'm saying? Because he knew when I'm playing him, I got to go to my move. And Tim made me start like realizing I, I, I got to do my work early. Like defenses, right? I got to meet him at the free throw line. I got to, he made me turn my brain on because my physical act, I was there physically. Mm -hmm. Wasn't going to bully me. Wasn't, so now he thinking. So now I got to think it. it. It became a thinking man's game for me, not just the physical part. So, okay, what can I, how can I manipulate where he catch the ball at? Okay, meet him at the free throw line. Push him out. Don't let him walk me straight down the line. Okay, I know he want to shoot his bank shot on this side, so I'm going to try to take that away on this side. Some of the battles that KG and Tim had with, with each other, historic, you know what I'm saying? So, but now they both deserving of, of the accolades and, and everything that they received in that. I mentioned Tim Duncan and his great combination of humility and confidence, and, and uh, Tim was an amazing teammate um, because he was so dominant. He was such a great player, but he, he took everything on his shoulders. And I remember we had a game one time where we lost a game, it was a close game, and he, he comes into the locker room. He's like, guys, that's, you know, that's my fault, man. It's my fault. I got, I got to be better. And he, he had like 39 points and 18 rebounds, you know, <laughs> I'm looking at the stats, <laughs> like, Tim, you, you, you know, you played pretty well. <laughs> no, I got to be better. I gotta, and it was genuine. It was, it was genuine. And, and um, that's why I love Tim. So guys like that who take on that burden of the team's success and, and are willing to take the blame, even when everybody knows how good they are and that we never would have had a chance in the first place, you know, if, if they hadn't mm -hmm. done their thing, that's, uh, that, that's, that's powerful leadership. How are you, sir? Great, Cam Duncan. Oh, the great Bill Russell. <laughs> I just heard about the award. That's awesome. Unbelievable. That's, that's unbelievable for the award, not for you, obviously. <laughs> it's an honor to have your name on there. That's great. That's great. Thank you. Great to see you. If you had a choice,
to start a team with either Tim Duncan or Shaq, who would you start it with? I don't know. That's a good question, isn't yes. it? Yes, yes, because now they're both the tall guys. <laughs> they're both franchise players. And they're both the great players, but they, like Wilt and I, they both do completely different things. Exactly. You know, uh, Tim Duncan played more like I played. Right. I, I, I had a lot of fun talking, just, just listening to you talk about your, your philosophies of, of, of the game and, and, and your teammates and, and, and life. Obviously, it's, it's kind of eerie, some of the similarities we've had um, uh, in our lives and, our, and, and kind of our careers. I love this. I love that you're a basketball mind. You, you never know that about people until you're able to sit down and, and talk to them. So that was a lot of fun uh, learning that about you. Well, we have so much in common. I find it very flattering. This is the way I feel about it. Do you know the name Jackie Robinson? Absolutely. The day after he died, his wife called me and said, I want you to be a pallbearer at Jackie's funeral. I said, of course. I said, but could I ask why? Why me? And she said, you were Jackie's favorite athlete because of the way you That's conducted, really cool. huh? That's pretty cool. <laughs> and, and I feel the same way about you. You've played hard, played smart, won championships, and I don't think you finished with that yet. I'm not. Really? I'm not. <laughs> I want to win one more trophy. I've got yeah, at, least, at least one more. <laughs> I have a lot to learn. I want to become a better player than I am today. To reach that goal, Leonard absorbs all he can from his more accomplished teammates. As Kawhi Leonard answers. To play alongside an NBA legend like Tim Duncan is great. He makes the game easier for me. You know, gives a lot of knowledge to me throughout the game. You think that Kawhi Leonard doesn't talk much. When Timmy first got here, it was like mental telepathy. I would, I would say something to him, and he would stare. The same stare that, same stare that Tony gets on the court. And... Timmy's got superpowers with his eyes, too. <laughs> He's the only teammate that never asked me or talked to me to get the ball. He just looks at me. <laughs> and when you're 19 years old coming from France, that's very scary when he looks at you. He doesn't have to talk to me. Most of the guys are like, hey, Tony, I'm open. You know, Bruce was a pain. Eh? Tony, you missed me in the corner. Tony, I'm like. But Timmy, just look at me like. And I'd be like, hey, Pop, Timmy, look at me. We should run a play. <laughs> and Pop would be like, he really look at you? I was like, yeah, so we should run a play. If you want me to be the point guard tomorrow, I need to pass him the ball right now. So that's special power, and that's another reason why he's special, because he doesn't have to talk to get the ball. <laughs> you just give him the ball. We know how great Tim Duncan was um, in his league. Uh, you know, with that, with that franchise, I had my battles with him. Also was a teammate with him um, in the Olympics, and just, um, just seeing you know, what he was able to accomplish, you know, not only um, in the regular season, but more importantly in the postseason. This is going to be your league in a little while, but uh, I appreciate you giving us this here. <laughs> and, uh, he basically, he lived in the postseason. But uh, uh, playing against a, a, a young LeBron and an, old, and an older LeBron, <laughs> yeah. uh, two different players, two totally different players, and it was, it was, it was fun to watch and be a part of. You know, that, that was his address, you know, so, um, you know, for, for, for me to be linked with, uh, with the great and, and the big fundamentals, it, it means a lot. You know, you know, I've heard you say many times the greatest big man, Kareem, Wilt, Bill Russell, maybe Akeem, then maybe me. Now, you hear a lot of other people say Tim Duncan is the greatest power forward to ever play the game. I agree with that. So, wasn't trying to be disrespectful. 
Never be disrespectful. The guy is a great player. He has five. I just don't want people to get mixed up with, with power forward and center. What were you thinking, mm -hmm. Tim Duncan, when your teammates Tony Parker and Manu Ginobili pranked you, set you up to sit on a cup on the bench in 2013? Here we go. <laughs> oh, this is... <laughs> you kind of look like you knew what so it was. This... <laughs> Yeah, well, we've been going back and forth uh, with this all year long. So I had gotten him a couple times. He'd gotten me a couple times. Obviously, Tony in there as well. And so we became hyper aware of our surroundings and just always kind of uh, being on tilt, being ready. And uh, he, he caught me slipping. So we always know you as the spur for life, and you are because you've been there one. Um, You've been there your whole career. But in 03, after a title, Orlando, am I right to say this? Orlando seemed like a possibility. Why didn't that happen for you? Yeah. Why why didn't that end up happening? And how close was it to happening? It was absolutely in the ballpark. Um, why didn't it happen? Uh, Coach Pop, David Robinson, you know, talking to these guys and uh, um, uh, them kind of having the last word um and uh understanding that i really enjoyed with what what i had there and maybe had a little more of control and certainty where i was so now it's his first contract is up everybody remembers this all the talk about going to orlando oh and he played it up he played it up really well their biggest fear that they might lose duncan to free agency after this season tim and i made that pack years ago that uh, the best thing for him to do was to be totally free uh, to make a decision on what he wants to do with his future so we've understood philosophically and intellectually from the beginning that's the way it should be and we've never veered from it and it's never even been a topic for us and orlando's got 18 million dollars in cap money so they can sign two major players whether it's going to be grand hill eddie jones tracy mcgrady obviously at the top of that list so finally he made a decision after putting me through the grinder uh, for what seemed like an eternity. He came over one night, true story, don't you even try to deny it. True story. He thinks it's funny. He walks in, he says, Pop, before he said, I gotta just tell you, I'm gonna go to Orlando. And he, but he doesn't, you know, say, ah, just kidding. He waits like five or six seconds, and I'm stunned for a while, and then he tells me what he's gonna do. The Orlando Magic were very close, Bruce says, to signing Duncan in the summer of 2000 when T-Mac and Grant Hill both joined the team. Bruce said that Magic head coach Doc Rivers denied Tim's request during the negotiations that his family could join the team plane on some flights to games. And that is when Rivers lost Tim Duncan, who could have played next to you, Tracy, in Orlando. <laughs> He's <sad over> <laughs> Let's give Duncan a moment here, uh, Jalen, because there's probably never been an all-time great who, who had as little fanfare and, and, and asked for as little fanfare as he did. What was it like being on the floor with him? He's the most stable, great player in the history of the NBA, on and off the floor. You won't see another guy play 20 straight years for the same team and make the playoffs each year. Tim Duncan was the best defensive player also, will rebound the basketball, and also for a seven-foot guy, his touch, his 15, 18-foot bank shot, facing up playing against smaller guys and against larger guys. Usually the seven-foot guy, Greeny, dominated you by dunks. Tim Duncan dominated you by skill, and that's what helped make him be an all-time great. I, I, I'm trying to think, has there ever been a superstar, the greatest player in his position, who was able to relinquish and let other guys when he was past his prime or wasn't as great as he was, he let Ginobili and Parker take over and didn't say a word. I mean, that's really hard for a guy because we all got egos. The first time I encountered greatness, it was definitely 
experience in playing with Tim Duncan. Being able to actually play in the finals and play with the best power forward to ever play the game. I think in the finals in 2003, game six, I think Tim Duncan's greatness was really overlooked that game. I knew he was great, but I really seen greatness that day. It's the iconic Duncan game. 21, 20, 10, 8. Giving it to two you. Two blocks away. Giving it to you. Two blocks away he, from the He quadruple. had the two blocks and they stole them from him. Is that true? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They marked them off. Is this they like gave, a, they, gave, they gave them away. Is this a crazy San Antonio thing or yes. is this a real thing? No, this is like a real thing, like but also a San Antonio thing. Some dude in a bar in San Antonio told you this and yeah. you just Yeah, I don't know it? who started it, but everybody was like, oh, that's true. Uh, it's just a, it's such a such a moment where um, we just come that far and it's, it's just you're just trying to get it trying to get it done and trying to get over the the hump there to win the championship for him to go out with having two blocks away from a quadruple double 20 points 20 rebounds and like eight blocks dominate the whole game from start to finish demand double teams and his stat line, just to see how dominant someone can be and how and his greatness. I respect the guy more who goes out there and get the job done and focused on winning games instead of talking about it. It was a, just a, such a fun night, and uh, I, I didn't. I ended the game, and Tom James, my PR guy, yeah. kind of shows me the stats, and I was like, <laughs> "Oh wow, I didn't know. I, I didn't. Re, I didn't realize I was that close to to a, a quad double." And um, so I was just kind of just kind of playing in the moment. This is the most important comment that I can make about Tim Duncan. I can honestly say to Mr. and Mrs. Duncan, who have passed, that that man right there is exactly the same person now as he was when he walked in the door. Thank you, San Antonio. Thank you. And that was the Tim Duncan episode. Be sure to hit that like button if you enjoyed, subscribe if you are new, and hit that notification button to stay up to date with all the new episodes. Be sure to comment down below which player you would like to see next, and we'll catch you in the next one. Peace.